Hi, my name is Charlie Clarkson, I'm a first year business management student at Leeds Beck University. In this vlog, I am focusing on my buying behaviour and the brand of Apple. The product I'll be focusing on is my iPhone 7, which this vlog is being recorded on. My purchase of the phone was limited in terms of my need recognition and decision making process. In terms of consumer involvement, this purchase was high. This was because the phone had a high price and a large symbolic meaning, but it's also an infrequent purchase. This purchase is also seen as business to consumer as I bought the phone directly from the business. The business to consumer decision making process begins with myself recognising a problem which in this case is the fact that I need a new phone since my current contract has run out. Next up will be my information search. Here I specifically looked up a range of different iPhone models as well as a range of different contracts that I could get the phone on. The next stage of my decision making process was the evaluation of alternatives. In this case I did look at other brand of phones such as Samsung. However, my product choice was Apple mainly due to my brand loyalty to them. My previous phone was also Apple and I was satisfied whilst I had it, therefore I chose to stay with them. This meant that the purchase outcome was an iPhone with a contract that best suited my demands as well as my financial capability. My post-purchase feedback is positive but also expected due to me already having used Apple products and therefore knowing what quality of products I could expect. This purchase also means that any future purchases of phones or technology for myself will most likely continue to be from Apple. I would say that my decision to buy this iPhone was based specifically around its brand. My decision was impacted by external factors such as culture where Apple has seemingly made society grouped into a fear of missing out. Most people now own Apple products and I believe most people in society want to be a part of this group and therefore will buy Apple products specifically due to the fear of missing out or being different. I therefore believe that Ajjun's theory of planned behaviour can be applied to my decision making process. The model begins with three factors that can influence buying behaviour. Attitudes in this case were both my own and those of society. My own attitudes around what phone I wanted was open, although I did favour Apple more in my information search. However, I did research alternatives. Societal attitudes push me towards Apple specifically because their products are perceived to have high quality and be very popular. I therefore wanted to be a part of this group. I didn't want to feel like I was missing out. My perceived ideas around the phone and my own past use of Apple products also made me favour them more leading up to my final decision. Subjective norms suggest how your decision will be seen by your social groups such as family and friends. I would say this doesn't apply too much to my decision around my phone, but more to large purchasing decisions that can take an extended problem solving situation such as a car or a holiday. My subjective norms came in the form of most of the people around me owning Apple products. Therefore, this made me feel like I should follow the trend and also use Apple products. My decision would be okay with these groups seeing as though they too use Apple products and they are the ones who have impacted my purchase. Perceived behavioural control determines whether an individual wants to make a decision or not. It doesn't take into account factors that may stop the decision from becoming a reality. It is instead an individual's most desired outcome or decision that can be made. Perceived behavioural control in my case was the fact that I was able to change my phone. I could get a newer version of an iPhone or have the chance to look at alternative brands which may have different features or be cheaper. However, actual behavioural control can also come into play. This explains what factors may make certain decisions harder for individuals, thus impacting their final decision by limiting the options that they have. My actual behavioural control only really limited me financially as I could only afford up to a certain price of phone. Apart from that, I had no major controls holding my purchase back and therefore my decision was made a lot more easy. My intention in the end was to purchase a newer model of an iPhone. My actual behavioural control of financial ability meant the most recent version of the phone I could get was the iPhone 7. With no other controls holding me back and the decision being seen well by my social groups and as well as my own attitudes, I was able to make my final behaviour of purchasing the phone, directly from my intention. Overall, I would say my buy behaviour is somewhat limited in the case of my phone. I had to take a while to research my options and the cost of the product was relatively high. However, it was not high enough to be considered an extended purchase like a car, or low enough to be considered a routine purchase at a shop. The main reason behind my purchase was the brand and my brand loyalty. Although I will always make sure to be open to change when making decisions over products that I purchase infrequently. Thanks for watching.